welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. Hi, I'm Jesse. Charlie. And I'm Josh. And uh, today we are going to be going over a poem that I discovered from a literary magazine. Uh, literary magazines are something I've been looking to get into because they are a great source for new and upcoming writers to make their way into the uh, writing field, into the writing field, and uh, uh, provide uh, readers with that sense of attention. Uh, the uh, magazine that I'm uh, that I picked this particular poem from is the Gettysburg Review, and the particular poem we are going to be discussing is one that amazed me. Uh, and that is the poem about Chuck E. Cheese a friend posted on Facebook. I love Chuck E. Cheese. Don't don't judge me. I had like 12 birthdays there. They said, okay, really? Don't, don't judge me, Charlie. I don't like Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I won't. I won't. And I liked it as a kid. I went once I as a kid. I took a kid there once, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, this is a terrible place. <laughs> well, it used to be better actually... when I was a kid because yeah. they had yeah. real arcade games in there. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh. That too. The mm -hmm. tubes you can Instead climb of everything the like some scam. <laughs> mm -hmm. And everybody oh, yeah, the, the, the uh, redemption games, you get the same amount no matter how good or bad you do, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like those games. Mm -hmm. I like them when you actually get uh, you get the amount of tickets for uh, your skill level. But then again, a lot of those games are rigged anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like the lottery. The discussion starter that I have for this poem is, what do you feel this poem says about current events? What is it like through the eyes of adults and in children? Well, as, a, as a, an, a, an adult child, I'm going to flat out say I love Chuck E. Cheese. First of all, I'm going to say, when I read this, then read it again, and then again, and then said to myself, I, I might need to take something for this. It's like, is this a bad review on Yelp? Or is this a, what is this? I couldn't make heads nor tails or in between on, on it. It's pretty much a commentary of the current events from the perspectives of various people uh, and the way that the speaker it primarily the way that the speaker seeing things but she also does a good job talking about how a child sees things too yeah more yeah and it's just yeah. sad that the child uh, to them uh, Chuck E. Cheese is their utopia. It's a, an area where they feel... Where like, a kid can be a kid. No copyright yes. infringement intended. But they, it, it feels uh, they're, like... They're helping them. They have a great sense of uh, control. Uh, of, and it, it's carefree, too. Uh, I think the most powerful line in this poem is, and I quote, but rather it starts and ends with the sound of my son's voice in the bathroom of Chuck E. Cheese as he lovingly whispers to no one while peeing, I wish my home was here, wistful as far away kites or as mist near an island. Uh, not only is it uh, a control from the child's perspective, but there's also a sense of uh, masculinity. It's very far-fetched, uh, but regardless of age group, uh, Referring to the male geni genitalia has always been a, a sense of dominance in literature, and the sense of urinating, the same thing. It's pretty much... I drank all my apple gun. juice, I have to take... dogs it. mark their territory and all that stuff. It's, so it's, there's a basis... There's an animal instinct to it, and we're animals after all. Yes, but based on what you were saying, I think it's a critique of American culture. Kind of a uh, fear for the next generation is what I got. It's like yeah, that too. It's like this, yeah. in this uh, stuff that a kid should not have to even be thinking about. Is somebody getting their head cut off somewhere? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it is so much everywhere mm -hmm. in culture now, right? With these kids on social media, seeing stuff and ISIS and you know, mm -hmm. and all the gory and violent movies and all the gory and yeah. violent TV shows. You know, this. I don't know, I think you can kind of be surprised what kids come up with on their own. I know yeah, when that, I worked in know. preschools, they were just like, they said some really weird things mm -hmm. that you're just yeah. like... And it's just sad because of the sources. <laughs> because it seems like the speaker in this poem, uh, Tajay Silverman herself, who is... Say, uh, she's pretty much talking about her circumstance. Uh, and it seems like, uh, as far as we can tell, uh, she has 
given her son the best possible life and away from harm's way that, you know, that he possibly yeah. can at the age of five. His friend Sammy, who he is in a class with, not so much, especially since he has an older brother, and older brothers mm -hmm. have that stigma to... Uh, corrupt the youth? Corrupt the youth. It's <laughs> just people so in that age too. group where yeah. they, between older, bro older siblings or, I don't know if you could say a bully or a hotshot, Someone, just someone within the, the realm, somewhere That's, around the, between the ages of 11 and 13, that will, well, It's just much, somebody older. It's not even, yeah. it's not they're a bully, it's not more, a world model. They're excited it's just, about it. Yeah, mm. it's just somebody mm. that's a little bit bigger than them, and they're little, so they're going to listen to the person mm. who's bigger than them. Yeah, they, they have to. It's bigger than them is going to, is probably not sure how to process things that they're hearing, and just says mm -hmm. it to the young person to see how they react to it, you know, what mm -hmm. I mean. Like, I don't think there's any kind of hint mm. in it of itself. The thing is that it's so ubiquitous in, within the culture. You know, it's a sign of where we're at right now. We need to be giving our youth the best possible uh, lives that that, that they're probably, we should be honest with them, but we should also be we should also treat them with and encourage them to treat others with empathy. Yeah, and you know another thing. Uh, yes, 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 and yes. Kids need time to play. Kids mm -hmm. need that extra hour of play. Even when I was little, structure, structure, structure. But there was a lot of emphasis on play. Yeah. But it was you know. When that bell rang, you came into the room, you did your work, and that was it. I, I mean, but kids need time to play. That's like, I get to be, as you were saying, I get to be in control. I get to be my own boss. I get to play on this machine, then I can go on that machine. No, I want to go It's like the kids in Las Vegas, okay? We want the kids to have what they deserve. When they're in high school, even middle school, they're going to start learning about the real world. You know, maybe even earlier, too. I feel like the one thing that a lot of people forget about when it comes to kids is that, um, like, yes, they're children, they're innocent, but you are training them as children to be adults. Exactly. And it's yes. very important yes. to make sure, you know, don't wait until they're adults to start teaching them right. about... I agree you know, things that they might have to face. You kind of have to slowly introduce it. And yeah. while this is extreme, I'm not saying, you know, go home and say, hey, this is what it looks like when somebody gets their head cut off on Chuck E. Cheese. Right. Like, you don't want to do that, but, right. you know, you have mm. to find, like, you can't shelter them from the bad in the world. Yeah. Because no, eventually they're going to, yeah. you know, witness but the it. Thing and you have about to it is, them. The thing about it is that the world is so bad mm -hmm. that it's uh, out of hand. There's only so much that you can do and no. only so right. much time you have before they're going to find things out on their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's nothing you can't prevent. And that's why people like slowly, yeah. you know, kind of like talk to them. And I, I, what I gathered from the poem is, you know, here she is shocked, like, oh my God, you know, my son's talking about somebody getting their head cut off at mm -hmm. a place like this. You know, it's like, supposed to be family friendly. Yeah, and I can understand the shock because that is something like you don't expect your five year old to be talking about after no. a day of eating pizza and playing games. And but you know, pizza. it's at the same time, you know, you can't ignore it because they heard that from somewhere. You have to mm. talk to them about it because I mean, as I, I'm a little bit more optimistic, I believe there's more good in the world than there is bad, but yeah, they're still that. bad and mm -hmm. you still have to address it before it they have to learn to process it mm. on their own because yeah. You know, everybody, most of the people who, who have witnessed a lot of bad in the world, when they have to process it on their own, come out with bigger issues. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I you totally don't want that agree. either. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you want kids to be kids, but you need to address yeah. the things. Yeah, and you know, mm -hmm. that, that, I, agree. Yeah, you have I to totally it. agree. You know? It's just sad that it, that, yeah, that it, that it's mm. That it comes out of a place like, like, like Chuck E. You know? Cheese. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, no, because <laughs> even Chuck E. Cheese, where are you? You're at a place with an animatronic rat. Yeah. You know that? <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. It's like I don't want to hear it. It's not an indictment of American and, culture. And, and, I really think it is. And it's the ultimate cesspool of germs. Mm. Can't hear you. Yeah, well, I mean that's I like a lot, ratatouille. Well, a much bigger <laughs> deal. That ball pit is a cesspool yeah. of yeah. And so are rats. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, so are the children. Mm. Children touch and spread mm. everything. So oh, well, not well, a cesspool of germs and noise exactly. too. Exactly. The ball pit. Yeah. Rats are, yeah, rats get dirty in their own way. Yeah. All kinds of la, 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 the la, good la, news la, la, about la. the the good news about the Chuck E. Cheese next uh, closest to where we are is 
if I were to ever go with Charlie, I would leave Charlie there, and I'd go a few buildings down to Barnes & Noble. Me too. Well, I would go in Barnes & Noble as well, but I would, of course, take all the precautions necessary before yeah. entering. I would do the same thing. I like I like, like the friends. I actually, the reason I love Chuck E. so much is because, yes, the fun, the freedom, but have I been there in the past 15 years? No, sadly. But, oh, uh, like the Pizza Man is a drummer. I'm a drummer. I would always try to get on the stage to play the drums, and they say, you know what, screw it. Well, but that's how is it like good playing memories, the drums and that's up what at the uh, pizza man? Want to share his drums with me? Oh yeah, I, I would imagine it's pretty yeah. tough. And especially if you're the birthday, uh, having a birthday there again. Yeah, you know, going to Chuck E. Cheese. Memories. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. Like I have nothing but fond memories at Chuck E. Cheese. Same here. Sure, yeah. everybody else yeah. has good memories you know. of Chuck E. Cheese. Well, like, I didn't until years had, later that I realized it's an animatronic rat. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on you. <laughs> 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 I, they're I, going bankrupt. Though, I did. Have, yeah. What? I, they're what? they're going to struggle oh. because oh, of everything. Going no. On right now. Yeah. But sorry, I don't mind. Don't I'm having a mental breakdown. I did have two birthdays there in first and second grade, but and I've been to several birthdays and events there. But yeah. When I was a kid. Once you get to a certain age, it there was no Chuck E. Cheese around. There was just one up in Paramus. Yeah. But what were your thoughts about the? The, the particular details, uh, some of my favorites are, uh, was not about the Chuck E. Cheese across the parking lot from Target where we celebrated my son's fifth, fifth birthday yesterday. Though the poem was a fucking masterpiece according to the friend who posted it and who, as it happens, is an expert on masterpieces, having trained to decipher love letters, poems, and sacred decrees that for 900 years have been stuffed in a synagogue's attic in Cairo because they contain the word God. From the wet, the gist of how it starts, it's people on I didn't Facebook. realize that was the beginning of the poem. I had to, <laughs> to read it like a few times. I, I know. was just like, people on Facebook, is this somebody just making a comment about I know, that's what I was like, thinking. People on Facebook have an air that they are the authority of all that is. It's these people that walk around Facebook like they know everything. Right. You may be schooled in a certain thing, like you, you may be a doctor, you may be a lawyer, but if you don't know everything, because if you knew everything, you, you probably know, wouldn't waste your time on Facebook. No. Yeah. yeah. You would yeah. know how to get rid of all that I, I'm, Yeah, I'm getting to that conclusion. That's now. what I was going to say. It's more you know. of a... Uh, Play devil's advocate a little bit. From Sharing, informa uh, sharing information about literary gladiators, catching up with actual things that I want to know about people and right. reading messages. Everything else is... I don't want to see no, a it's video on what is how many people you... Scabs and... and I'm a bit of a troll on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a human being. I I'll admit, it. I, don't really, yeah. I don't read all your posts. I was recently called a meme queen, mm. and that's mostly because the memes I don't share on Facebook are really good. <laughs> mm. I was called a clumsy hazard to myself because I'm a clumsy person, mm. and that was from a friend. But so yeah, see, everybody I would be flipping him off right now. <laughs> she shows you know, a poem to talk about how children see yeah. life versus how adults see it. So. Yeah. You know, you gotta turn the light switch off. Oh, I, yeah. use, I, mean, I use it to off. talk about literary gladiators. Yeah. I use it to that too, and the band I'm with, and mm. whatnot, you know? And you talk about the uh, library tip. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Work. But um, I, uh, vacuums, food, drums. There was a poem that Silverman said inspired her to write this, uh, written by Campbell McGrath, called Benediction for the Savior of Orlando, which has to do with people involved in commercialism for uh, kids and kids' activities. Uh, first, they go on to talk about uh, Disney World and the other four the Orlando ride. parks. I yeah. swear to God, <laughs> and, and, I swear on the almighty drumstick. Well, yeah, they, they, uh, they, they go on to uh, blast and slam Chuck E. Cheese. I don't want to hear it, I'm sorry. So, it's just, it's this whole thing about destroying American culture and its yeah. commercialization, consumerism, and its methods to you know. manipulate and monger a yeah. reaction. I get that. Uh, strip malls. Initially out of the youth and then ultimately out of everybody. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, they, they try to reduce you to a consumer and that's it. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's sort of messaging from uh, media is trying to get you to be just someone. Yeah. They want, yeah, they want they you just to buy, consume, buy, consume, buy, consume. Buy, their buy, goal is it. not to, their goal is ultimately to control through entertainment and what they consider as assistance and help and make happy and for people to comply. 
Yes. I'm going to say one thing. I might be digressing slightly. Don't crucify me. But when you tell somebody to like or share or post, you know, if it's something like what we're doing or something like a, a faith-based or work or something that's not like, hey, if I get 100 likes, I'm going to take my car and drive it off a building. Because, believe it or not, some people will do that for attention. So, I mean, again, I am slightly digressing. Well, Suki Sales was able to get people to take uh, money out of their parents' wallets and send it to them. And, yeah, and then yeah, it's as, like... In exchange, he said he'd send them a postcard from Jamaica. <laughs> and you have kids that will actually do that. Oh, yeah. And well, that's that, it. He got in trouble for that. You know, <laughs> you know I want the attention. I, it's all about me. Okay, yeah. Not really, but, you know, I respect what you want to post, but... Don't say, oh yeah, I also need a thousand dollars because mom found out about the car that I ruined. LOL. That that that, that there's no intelligence to that to me. I'm sorry. And I did see a post. I don't know. I, I, a long time ago. If I get a thousand or five thousand likes, I'm going to take the, my dad's car out for a spin. The kid was like 16. The I things don't know. that are going around are the things that don't matter, and the things that do matter or are like, like people are like, no, I don't want to be involved. Yeah. Well, like saying, this, and I'll pour milk over my husband's head. And it's right. like, what? <laughs> I mean, I get it. Yeah, it's. I mean, I do see the. You want yeah, to Yeah, it's funny. become very. I think our society has become very self indulgent. Everybody feels that they are special in the way that. Not even a self divinity, it's more of just a. a self centeredness. Self, it definitely yeah. self centeredness. A uh, great sense of. Uh, you, I mean, Arrogance. Yeah, I, like I say, you can you can still be funny. You could still be, you know, ha ha ha, you know, pie in the face. But don't profit off of it. I was gonna say. I mean, I don't have a problem with people making a profit from jokes or anything like that. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good thing to yeah. a, have a good idea and to be able to. It's a great thing to be able to make profit out of entertaining people because yes, yes, we need we need people to en uh, entertainment in whatever fashion exactly. is yeah. it's that ability for people to escape from reality yeah uh, because otherwise they would be very there would be this great sense of uh, mechanism I get that when we're not we're not machines we are human beings mm -hmm. yeah but you know I mean escapism is dangerous too because it, it no. distracts you <laughs> from uh, from the things right like I mean if your reality is in such a place where you can't stand it you need to escape from it it, it's the ability to be able to balance that. The That's what I to wanted to say. Be wise. <laughs> yeah. Wisdom. Yeah, well, I mean, well, yeah, but wisdom is doesn't tell you to escape reality. You you should be allowed to entertain yourself. Yeah, I mean, I hope. So. But just look at the flip side. Don't constantly consume yourself with everything that's real. Uh, I mean, or is it real? Work is one oh, thing, yeah, but yeah. just to consume yourself with news after news after yeah news. That, that's gonna that's gonna yeah that's bad too yeah yeah and yeah. in a way that's the same thing it's a, the escapism because what really is important is what you're, is going on in your own life mm -hmm. yes you know and uh yeah it, it's, family it's a matter of you know. yeah it is a matter of minding your own business people seem to have a tough time doing you know I'm yes. guilty of it myself. Sometimes I'll say something but, stupid, and you know, but like I said, yeah. I'm so much better at it just because I don't want to deal with it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm done with uh, just like. following people because it's the same, pretty much the same thing. If not you know. worth the stress, not worth the time. Mind your business, handle mm. what you need to, yeah. and if your kid comes back from Chuck E. Cheese talking about decapitation, then you handle that without posting it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, there's no. <laughs> That's another issue. Call, with, uh, just parents. call corporate instead. The, the thing I've you noticed: know. parents post every little minuscule thing about their kids on Facebook. I see that. And yes. I mean, a Christmas picture is one thing. Maybe them riding their bike for the first time, you but know. not them crying because you denied them of pizza at seven in the morning. I promise nothing in the future. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I don't want to see. I don't want to. I don't want to see. I don't want to see potty training. No, God, no, you know what? No, honestly, that, that, that's that, gonna that's gonna embarrass the kid when. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Fifteen I, years I, from now. I turned my kid into me. Probably. <laughs> what can? No, I was not joking. But <laughs> no, I'm probably I was joking making a joke, profit. but no. Yeah. No, I mean, I as you said, no, that's a, that's another thing too. Because if you're <laughs> potted, if you're training your kid on 
that could probably be considered a crime. I'm not going to say what crime, but we, we have... There's I think, just a lot of strange, sick you know, people yeah. on the internet. Yes, you're and posting thing, your child and, every 30 seconds. And, things, like, and Facebook is public. It goes to public domain yeah. because uh, people, uh, oh yeah, anyone can see it. It doesn't matter what your privacy settings are. Like it, Somebody it, just has to Google the right thing and there it is. It may be free, but Mark Zuckerberg is finding a way to make moolah. Oh, yeah. Anything that we uh, wanted to bring uh, up about this poem that we didn't yet? Yeah, we went a little off track, but... Yeah. A little. Okay. I think this is the kind of poem that's definitely going to do that. Uh, yeah. I remember when uh, Dan, Kayla, and I... Uh, you went to Chuck E. Cheese without me? No, we didn't. We were talking about... Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> we were talking about a poem uh, regarding the home of one's childhood one could. Mm -hmm. uh, and we came to the conclusion that there was more to talk about. It, it did more to spark conversation. Uh, a conversation about our own childhoods than the poem itself did as far as us responding to that poem. It seems kind of like the same thing where it's just, you know, it's just a topic to kind of get you started talking about some things and sharing ideas and that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with, you know, feeding, uh, food, uh, what is it called? Food for thought yes. is what it is. That's it. So. She responds to the incident with uh, Trayvon Martin where she refers to uh, uh, my son turned five on the fifth anniversary of the death of a boy who had gone out to buy Skittles. It's a very interesting way to uh, bring about the uh, discussion about uh, Trayvon Martin. The discussions that people have are on race uh, and how we tend to sympathize better when, when the subject that is meant to garner sympathy has a face and that people can relate to or actually become see. aware about in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. That too, but when you're able to relate and make connections, mm -hmm. it begins to hit home a bit deeper. Yeah, but sometimes people do it just for the, to make you feel guilty. You know, I, I mean, I, I had an experience where I, I was short on, mm -hmm. the guy made me feel like crap. I said, I'll go to my car and get some change. How's that for an answer? I said, I live two blocks down. I'll be right back. Back gave a hundred dollars. He said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" I'm like, "Don't make me feel like crap, pal." I told you, I do what I can. But again, I agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, it, you you see the look on their face. It's like, mm. "Buddy, can you spare a dime? Mm. This is my reality." Mm. Yeah, I've seen pictures of people that, especially those that have uh, died prematurely, yeah. and terrible. You, know. you, you, you just, it just really is gut wrenching. Yeah. I'll do what I can, Absolutely. but this guy, he made me feel like garbage. And everybody had to hear it, so I go back, here's a hundred. Told you mm. to be back. Do we have any final thoughts? Can we go to Chuck E. Cheese? No. <laughs> Damn, I don't say it. Actually, you know what, when things get better, when everything is back to somewhat normal. back to normal, we will drop you off, and then me, Jesse, Larry, and Dominica will go to Barnes & Noble. Well, can I come to that too, afterward? I'll yeah. be in a, I'll... you eat all of your vegetables. <laughs> I will. Do they sell vegetables <laughs> at Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> are they real vegetables? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Are they? I think some of I, I digress. I'm sorry. Do they have a salad bar or some, or some of them? I heard they were. They've got to have a vegan something. Something for the adults to eat. Yeah. Because I've seen, I, granted, the adults are there to bring their kids. I know. Yeah, they need some time to uh, themselves. Ari's well. mom has said that she, she'd have to take a, a Tylenol or something. I've actually seen people sit in the uh, over by where they play. Uh, granted, I haven't been inside one yeah. in 20 years, so I know a lot has changed since. Yeah, I, I, from my understanding, the games are more educational, and <laughs> I, th I think, and from my understanding, I think they did away with the ball pit. Could be wrong, but... Uh, well, and in a way, a good decision. Yeah, but, and that I can, you know, that I can, I can agree with it. Unless you can sanitize the crap out of it, but you can't. And they're gonna, it, it, even if that, if they ever bring it back, I don't think it's going. I to. think the tunnels are gone. Okay, mm -hmm. well, mm, they can be clean. Those are easier to clean. It's easier to clean, but if uh, somebody does something in there, yeah, it's it's like mm, you're yeah, going wrong. They're gonna, they're yeah, gonna do stuff anywhere. Yeah. So. You know, <laughs> they still got the slide though. So When's the last time you've been to Chuck E. Cheese? I was there with my godson a few years ago. Oh, man, why didn't take me? I was going to say I was there a few years ago, too, with a you-know-who. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, other than that, I was there once when I was a kid. Were you on the slide? No. 
They had the Star Wars arcade game, the original Star Wars arcade game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was a great game. That was a game that they had that I, I loved. It was a, like a crazy game. You get all these marbles, put up. It, I just and the, the way it worked, I loved it. You could not get me off that thing. Mm. You literally had to pull me away from it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then I'd go do something else. Probably get hurt. All right then. If you are interested in checking out uh, the Gettysburg Review, uh, they release. Uh, new editions every, uh, they, they release it four times a year, it's a quarterly. This is my winter of 2018 edition, mm. and uh, this is published by Gettysburg College, and it comes out with some pretty good material. Uh, this, this particular poem is the one that actually encouraged me to subscribe. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators, and for now, keep reading. Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and on the next episode we are going to be discussing Freshwater by Kweke Abizi. Uh, if you like what you see on our channel, please support us on our Patreon. Uh, the uh, more money that we have, the more material we can provide for you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this discussion, and for now, keep reading. <laughs>